Um, my name's Ram, and this is the Joomla Toolbox. These are a bunch of things that I've found much easier, that make my life much easier when I'm building sites. So, what's in the box? We've got JCA e-editor, which I would have thought most of you have used mm -hmm. in the past. Do you configure it, though? Do you create different profiles for different users? When you've got, for instance, front-end users and back-end users, you've got mobile users now and everything else, the great thing with JCE Editor mm -hmm. is that you can set up different profiles. So if you've got someone in the front-end who all you want them to be able to do is do some basic text, you don't want them to be able to do much, you can lock down these profiles very simply and allow different people to have different views. You can also import and export those profiles so that once you've made this set, this master set, you can just pull it into a new site really easily. Um, most components have got free tree plugins so that when you're adding links, you can access all the products, for instance, in Virtumart or Media Shop or Red Shop or, or Docman or anything like that. So you can make links really easily. So that's our first major tool. And um, it's free, which helps. A subscription will give you some more plugins. But most uses, um, you'll find that the free version works fine. Is it worth, is it worth buying the subscription version? Do you think, the media stuff's quite good. It, it adds an easier way of adding video and stuff. Bits and bo right. it, it depends. It's a small subscription. I think it's 25 euros a year. Mm -hmm. And it's multi-site. So it's also you're giving back to the person who spent all that, that time. And when it's a low subscription like that, mm -hmm. I tend to buy one because you're giving back. Um, the next are the no number extensions. Have any, I'm sure most of you have used these. Have you come across them? Uh, Peter, Peter Weston has built a huge set of tools. I'm not going to talk about these ones today. Um, but he has an extension manager which you can install, which is quite handy when you're setting up a site because you're picking and choosing. So rather than going to his site and downloading them individually, you can just switch them on and off from his extension manager. Normally when I go to production though, I pull that out because I've already got everything set in place that I'm going to use continually. Um, the ones I am going to talk about are No Number Advanced Module Manager. Now this is one of the most useful tools I've ever found. It allows you to control when modules are displayed in a much more detailed way than the normal one, just menu items on and off. You can show modules on the home page only, which doesn't use the menu item. Actually, it's the true home page. You can turn it on and off in certain components. So, for instance, if you only wanted a special offer product module to show in a shop, then you'd set it to only show in the shop, and it will always show in the shop. doesn't matter what menu item it is, it will always show in that component. You can set modules to only show at certain times. So you may have a good morning module. They're a little out of date, but you get the idea of what you can do with it. You can also, in the free version, this is all in the free version, um, you can display modules to only certain user groups. So maybe your special people, you want to have a, an admin menu on the front end, you can make sure that's only shown to them. Um, the paid version um, allows a lot more detailed um, module display, so you can choose certain products within certain shops and various other things. But if you want to go further, MetaMod Pro is the answer, although it's a very technical um, solution and can give you a headache trying to configure it. But once you've got your head around it, that's amazing. You can show... A module just once, there's lots of things you can do with MetaMod Pro, but Advanced Module Manager is, it's just the Swiss army knife of module display, mm -hmm. and um, I strongly recommend that you take a look at that one. The next one I use a lot, especially when I'm building a site, is No Number Add to Menu. Normally, when you're building a site, you create the content, then you go back, and then you've got to create your menu items from the Menu Manager. With Add to Menu, once you've created a content item and you've saved it, you'll see a little button that appears that says Add to Menu. From that, you can then create the menu items as you go. So rather than either flicking backwards and forwards between two, you're staying in the article manager, 
creating your content, your menu items are going in at the same time, and especially with a big site, that can save you hours and hours of time. Um, the paid version extends to other components. The free version is just in con content, so just for articles. Uh, the next one, I know I'm running quickly, but I just, I'll take a load of questions at the end, but I just want to kind of get it through because I know we're pushed for time. Um, better preview. Another button which allows you to preview your content properly. Rather than the little light box you get, it will actually open a new window with the content loaded with all the modules so you can see exactly what it's going to look like. What I use this a lot for as well is if you're building a contact form or a, a return form for a newsletter sign up, it's always better to use the system URL because if you change the alias, that's going to break. This will always show you the original non-SEF URL, which for a, a page when you've filled in a form, that's no, of no interest to your search engine optimization. It's, you know, someone's already on your site when they're doing that. So that's very, very handy. These are all the free versions. Um, the next one is no number of modules and articles anywhere. They, these two give you little plug um, uh, buttons underneath your editor that allow you to drop in either a module or an article into another piece of content. The modules anywhere one you would use maybe if you had an article, a long article, and somewhere in the content you wanted a call to action form or um, wanted to display. If you've got any sort of module that you just want to drop into content, um, it also allows you to, I've used it where I've had a set of different modules and I've wanted to display them in a module without having to recreate them. Or There's loads of different ways you can, you can use this. The Articles Anywhere allows you to drop in either the whole article, the intro text, the title. Um, I use it for spinning up testimonial pages. So if you want a testimonial page by subject or by area for SEO, you can drop in the intro text or just or the full articles, and it's just it really saves a lot of time. Um, so that's them. How does the number of modules compare with load position? More options. Um, they don't have to be. They don't, you can also, they don't have to be in any positions as well. And what I tend to do with the ones that I'm only going to drop into contact, content, they're in a position none. And um, they don't have to be published either, I think. I think you can get, I think you can display unpublished ones as well. Um, load position's easy. This, I don't know, I, for some people, buttons are easier than remembering the curly brackets and everything else. You can also choose the output. Um, turn the title on and off. There's various other things you can do other than just load position. Load position works for a lot of things, but this just, it adds a little bit of extra um, features to dropping in a module. So, no number cache cleaner. Um, this again is another administrator toolbar button, and this allows you to clear your cache in one click which saves you having to drill down and, and, and find it. And um, the pro version also allows for global checking in one click. Really handy when you're spinning up sites or we're adding new content and you've got caching, you can clear the cache, go and check it in the front end rather than having to click through and change window. And you can stay where you are as well, which helps so you don't have to come out of whatever you're doing, go and clear your cache, come back into whatever you're doing. And the last one that I'm going to cover is RE Replacer. This was covered in um, Peter's talk yesterday uh, when he was talking about putting formulas into titles because you can't use subscript in, a, in an article title. What I've used this recently is um, I work for a company whose company name is an acronym and it always has to be in capital letters. But getting the 40 or 50 different staff that work in the company to remember to always put it in capital letters is a nightmare. And then finding those instances when you've got 2,000 blog articles and everything else is also a nightmare. So I use it so that whenever they type in 
their company name. Um, wherever it is in the site, it will always, whether it is or isn't, be converted into capital letters. Um, you can use it for lots of things. Um, examples evade me right now. But, I um, a site that has bronze, silver and gold as categories. And it got rebranded to stage one, stage two, stage three. Yes. And rather than do a site-wide change, it was just an instant. This doesn't change the database. This just runs through on page loads. So if you've got something, you know, if you had, for example, with this company, they've got images with their company name in it that need to be in the same case. So it will only change content. Um, there is a database replacer. Um, that no number do, but there'd be dragons there, so make sure you know what you're doing. So this is for runtime only? Yeah. Right. This I found recently, which has saved me so many headaches. Um, it, if you've got a lot of front-end users who like to start editing a content article and then wander off and go and have a cup of coffee and their sh session expires, and that article's now checked out. Um, this will allow you to create a front-end menu item um, where people can perform a global check-in without administrator access. This has cut down the number of, I can't edit this, calls I get, because now they can check it in themselves and go back in and start it. So this tool I found very, very, very useful. How do you label that for the front end user that wouldn't recognise a, a check in button? What do you call it? Check -in? Um, in one case, I have a menu item that says, Help, I'm locked out. Um, it, you know, it depends on the client. Yeah. Um, you can, you know, I can't edit, or well, it depends on the client. You can call it whatever you like, really. Um, and it will give you the check in results afterwards in the front end so you can see if anything was actually checked in or not. Um, the check-in stuff that people are currently authoring, but they haven't saved it yet. So you can imagine I'm working on an article and I'm not ready to publish it yet because I've just started. Someone else checks in, will that check in my article? But you haven't published it yet? I haven't published it yet. It's still, I'm still writing it. I didn't press save. And so it's first edit. So does that get saved and then checked in? That I'm unsure about, actually. Because I can imagine in scenarios I'm writing something which I need to get pre-approval of. Before but, I mind, but mind you, if you've just started, it's not anywhere anyway. Well, yes, but I'm wondering whether it then saves it because global checking is coming along. Does yes, then... but, that's, but when, you're, when, it's, when it's brand new... Yeah. It's nowhere. Yeah, but that doesn't then save everything which is now assigned. No, no it's, it's existing stuff. I, I've only used it on one two-man sites. Um, that I will look into, actually. Yeah. Um, but it has... I haven't really done a lot of front-end stuff, but recently I've, I've, I've had sites where people have wanted only me certain members of staff to be in the front-end, and they're constantly locking themselves out of things. And I just found it helped, so I thought I'd throw it in. My concern also would be someone could, could uh, repeatedly call the check-in, and presumably that will on one way bring the site down, because you've got a lot of back-end process going on, checking in particles, and you're getting, you know, a script kitty hammers that a thousand times a minute. This is where ACL comes in. Right, um, You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't allow any registered user access to this, you know, it would be editors and above or even managers and above. But what it does is it gives power to people who don't have the admin access to stop coming to you. Yeah, okay. Xmap. Xmap is the definitive sitemap. I don't know, has anyone found another uh, arrival to Xmap? I never have. Um, it creates great sitemaps. It creates them in XML and HTML. You can create multiple sitemaps. So if you've got registered users who've got access to more, you can have a registered sitemap and a, a front-end sitemap. You can also control what's shown in the HTML sitemaps. So you may want to minimize those links because humans read those. 
and then really explode all your content items and all your tags and everything else in, in an XML sitemap that can be picked up by the engines. Um, using your HT access, you can also make it appear that you've got a sitemap.xml in your route. So engines you don't submit to, when they're coming along, that's where they'll look for a sitemap. And those two lines of code there in your HT access will make it look like it's there, and they'll go and find it. Um, XMAP has tons of plugins. Um, I don't think I found a component, a major component that doesn't have an XMAP plugin. Plug is the one? Don't think so. So, and each plugin individually is is controllable. So you can set how much data you want to see from each component and how. When it comes to what you're displaying in your sitemaps, um, the way to disable certain parts of a menu is to go into, which I've always found a bit strange, is to go into the front end, logged in as a super admin, look at your sitemap and you'll see a load of ticks next to your sitemap and you can turn individual items on and off in there. ACL manager, well, Sandra was just in here, and his component, I, I, I always find ACL is something that gives me a headache the minute it's mentioned. His component makes it, it is a subscription component, it's a small subscription, and it really does take the headaches out of um, setting up access control for your users. You, you have it all in one place rather than having to go into each component. You've got it all there and it's just on and off for everything else. He also um, has an asset table checker which will keep your asset table in, in good order. Um, rarely that asset table can go really awry and fixing it can be held. This keeps it in top condition and stops you getting to that stage. Chronoforms is my form component of choice. Um, it's brilliant for entry level and you can pretty much do anything with it going up to way advanced. Um, it has two levels of wizard already in it. The easy wizard just allows you to drag and drop quick forms really easily. Um, takes you two, three minutes to create a, a, quite, quite an extensive form. The advanced wizard adds lots more features and lots more um, levels of customization. And it also allows for purely custom coded forms to be created. Um, earlier on this year, I created a kit builder, a sports kit builder using Chronoforms that ported the final project, uh, product out to Virtumart. Um, it's a free component. It requires a small donation to remove um, a link back to the developer. Um, and their support, I've no, I've, their support is amazing. Max and Bob, all the way up to really complex stuff, will take the time to help you, give you examples. They've got tons of examples on their forum as well. Um, I don't personally like the... Um, Joomla contact form. I much prefer using this. It also, their, their email system, you can BCC and you can set different emails to go to different people. You can template each email. So maybe you want to send an email to the person who submitted the form that looks completely different to what you're receiving yourself. Um, you can also, you can redirect users, you can show thank you. It's a very, very easy, simple way of creating forms on your site. JCH, we're getting a little techie now. JCH Optimize is a great plugin that once your site's built, um, has a whole load of settings that can help you to speed up your site. It will take all your CSS files and combine them into one and compress them. It will do the same with your JavaScript files. I have to say that every site's different and there's always a level of trial and error with this. Some files, just whatever you do, they don't, it doesn't matter what order you combine them in, they won't budge. But once you realise that that's the one that you can't, you can exclude it, so everything else 
else is compressed and that one's left out. Um, you can defer JavaScript to the bottom of the page and even with the most basic settings in this plugin, you'll see your Y slow results and your page load speeds drop big time. Again, this is a free plugin. Um, there's very little documentation, I have to warn you on this. Um, and it, do it doesn't have a website, it's just a source forge. Um, but the speed that you can get, uh, if you look up SiteGround's um, Joomla optimization slides, he goes into a lot more detail on this. In fact, that entire um, presentation is really good for optimization. Next one is jQuery Easy. Um, more and more components are using jQuery and more and more components are using different versions of jQuery. And it's not a 100% easy fix, but most of the time, if you're having jQuery problems, jQuery Easy will um, sort them out. It will scan the head, looking for different versions. Uh, you can set which version you want to load. And you can also customize how that works for the front and the back end. Um, it also allows you to disable captions, which generally most people don't use. And that's just one more call that's out of your site. Um, most of it works out of the box. Sometimes, however, you've got to do trial and error. There are a few components. Kieran, which one could you not just get to work? Which ones? You were talking about one, a component that just will only use one certain version of jQuery, and that's oh, it. Yeah, a few. Um, they're normally the kind of more obscure ones. <laughs> you can never tell them. Um, so, but I've used jQuery and it, it, it's, it's helped. And the first time I saw it, I thought it was actually adding fuel to the fire, to be honest with you. Um, and it, it literally worked right out of the box. It was, it was, it was superb. A key for admin tools and backup. If there's one subscription you buy, this is the one to buy. It's 50 euros plus fat a year. It covers as many sites as you like. What's also rather nice about it is that once you've got a subscription, you can create an individual add-on ID for each site you create. So if a customer leaves you, or what, you, can, you can turn each site's license on and off, and you can control them, which I quite like. Not that it, it happens very often, but once in a while, you, you know, someone leaves you. So they're not benefiting from your subscription pool when they stop paying you for support. Um, Akiba Backup allows you to quickly and easy, easily back up all your files and your database into one archive file. They have their own um, generic archive file, and you can also do them in zips. Um, the pro version also allows you to create re restore points when you add a new component. So if you upgrade a component or you add a new component, it creates, much like in, in, on your computer, a restore point so that you can easily flip back if something goes terribly wrong. Um, you can also configure it to back up remotely to S3 or Dropbox. I don't recommend Dropbox unless it's a very small site. Um, it's painfully slow. Um, and when it comes to recovering from a backup, uh, Akiba have something called Quick Start. You put two files and your archive into your new server and it guides you. The, all the way through. So that, if the drop, when you, because I mean, you mentioned to me yesterday that Dropbox was, was, was very, very slow, but it's not just down to your upload speeds, is it? Can't, dro Dropbox, I just, I tried Dropbox because I thought, when I saw it, I thought that'd be great. I tried it and it, it's just painfully slow and it fails a lot. S3 works really, really well. Because I, I back up manually a lot of sites. You know, from FTP to local, from local to, to Dropbox, or sometimes FTP directly to Dropbox, and it doesn't seem to be that slow at all. I've backed up about 20 <coughs> sites with the key backup pro to Dropbox, and never had any problems, never, no failures at all. And I've, had, had, I've, had, had, I've had a nightmare with Dropbox. Yeah, I've never had it. It's no, it, it can take a few minutes for each folder to finish syncing. You know, you get a little mm -hmm. blue icon when it's yeah. still syncing, but it's... Um, if you've got a small site, Dropbox is not a big, you've got a large... Yeah, I think the site size. Yeah, 
Because a lot of your sites will be from Bath. Well, know. I mean, you can't go over 150 mega anyway with Dropbox. Yeah, the real crumb job is that never yeah. um, But when, when you are transferring your backup file, hmm. you can do it through a keyboard, but you get this warning message that, that says something about you really should be using FTP. This doesn't free it. I haven't used the free okay. version for a yeah. very long time. I mean, he does. I mean, they warn against you. They 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 prefer you to use S3. S3 is incredibly cheap. Um, but I just I don't know. Dropbox and me. Maybe Dropbox doesn't like me. Um, but um, no, I've had problems with that. What I tend to do, I've got most of my clients are on separate hosting, and I've got a dev server that doesn't actually have anything live on. That's just a playground. So I back it all up from, through FTP to, to my server. Mm. Um, and finally, admin tools. Admin tools has enabled me to sleep at night, um, <laughs> especially with a few clients I've got who seem to have. And I, I must admit, it, you think that you may not attract attention. And the strangest sites atten uh, attract hackers little brochure sites that hardly get any, any traffic are some of the most hammered. I've got one guy, he's, a, he's an environmental health officer, and for some reason his, his domain, I don't know whether it's in a database or whatever, his domain gets about 38,000 attempts a month, and a keeper just bats them all off. Um, their web application framework is brilliant. It really does help to protect a site from a, from a wide range of common attacks doesn't need a lot of technical knowledge to set up. Um, and you can see the type of attacks that are coming in. So you can see what's going on um, and who's being batted off. It has geo-blocking, which some clients of mine like to use. But so many IPs come from different weird places. I don't know if you've ever taken the East Coast train line, but when you're on the East Coast train line on their Wi-Fi, everything thinks you're in Sweden. So they don't always tell the truth, so you don't want to block people who might want to get to your site. But as I said, these two tools, between them, if you buy one subscription, those are the ones that I would highly recommend. Um, questions? Hmm? Mm -hmm. But if you do anything with PayPal or my payments, then make sure you tick the button in the back end because the key browsing tools will block any communication with PayPal and other. I don't know. It hasn't on any of. Which I button? <laughs> I can't remember because it's been so long since I looked at it, but I remember I was building a site somewhere with PayPal and we had admin tools in school. And I couldn't get a response to that. I haven't had that yeah. in the last I've year and a half. I've got sites running both because I, I install admin tools as just yeah. on every single site. Maybe they fix that on the way yeah. used to. No, because I've got yeah. several e-commerce sites and they're fine. One thing that if you've got EasyBlog and you've got users using EasyBlog on the front end, that needs an exception um, because you can't upload images because they've got a separate media <coughs> manager. Um, I know I've run through this really quickly, so if anyone... Yeah, sort of unrelated question. Um, URL management, you know when you have a category and you say it's going to be the blog layout, by default it sticks blog on the end of the URL, so it becomes any main, com, whatever, category, com, blog. No? Does it? Yeah, it has done on 2.5.14 on one of my sites. Just by default, everything comes out as the layout becomes part of the URL. Have you checked that you don't have something else with the same alias that you were going for? That's possible. That's all changeable in the aliases. Okay. okay. Um, that's all. I think you'll find that's a duplicate alias issue. I would have thought because I've never seen it append. In the actual browser title? Yeah, in the actual address bar. So I click on category X, whatever it is, and it comes out as large as well, category X forward slash blog, because the layout is in the blog layout. So I've, I've, uh, I've got one site where it comes out as blog blog, because the layout is blog and the URL, the alias is blog. 
I've never seen that. Show, show me later and I'll okay. see if I can get to the bottom. I haven't seen that one. Um, anyone else? Great. Well, I think it's lunchtime. Thank you very much.